I've yeah. like I've said like five simple words yeah. and it yeah. came out with yeah. like the best day an unmanned spy chopper. The idea of this is to go to various locations within a building and uh, see what is happening. Um, so our device is the ligament tensiometer. Um, it was a device that is built to attach the ligaments, specifically the PCL, which uh, attaches the top bone of the leg, the femur, and the bottom bone, the tibia. And um, there's over 100,000 cases of people tearing this bone uh, ligament alone in the United States. And uh, currently, it all the time, right? right? Most of the time, or uh, car accidents, I know yeah. um, ACL is more common, but a uh, PCL um, occurs also. Mm -hmm. And uh, currently, the surgeon will attach the uh, ligament into the uh, the femur. And there are no measuring devices at this point, so he'll just pull on the ligament with his hand until he believes it's tight enough, and attach it to the tibia. Oh, I see. Right. So it just screws that in. Right. Basically, just puts a screw into the uh, the hole. And at this point, there's 25% failure rate. So I mean, one in every four surgeries fail and require a second surgery because there's no measuring device. Because if it's too tight, if he tightens it too much, it'll tear again. And if he tightens it too little, the knee will give out because there's not enough yeah. support. So this is where our device will come in. Our device, um, at this point, instead of having the just pulling with his hand, he'll be able to take our device and pull on it. And if you see, Mary, if you just hold this. Right. As you see, as you hold, he'll get tension readings and the tension will go up. So um, this will hopefully lead to a lower failure rate and less, a lot less money spent in the United States per year. Currently there's $900 million spent in the United States on second surgeries of this procedure since they fail so often. I'm Eileen Parr, I'm a civil engineering undergraduate and also I'm working here with Alan Blumberg, professor of civil engineering. This project that Eileen's been working on is to me the most important project that Stevens has done in a long time. It is all about saving people's lives. And Eileen is working on a technology to save lives every time there's a hurricane induced rainfall events. Eileen is figuring out how to develop a system to first predict how much rainfall is coming down, where it will flood in the Dominican Republic, and then how to issue an alert to get people evacuated. Congratulations. <laughs> how did you get involved in this? Um, well, I had done a passenger ship in the Dominican Republic, so they were looking for someone who was familiar with the terrain, also familiar with the topic, because flooding is also a specific, well, specialty within civil engineering. I had some knowledge taking the courses here at Stevens, so I felt very prepared. And I met with Dr. Bloomberg, and he kind of, I always wanted to find a way to give back to the Dominican Republic, and no better way than this. So I was very excited to get on this project. Uh, my name is Nicole McLeory, and I'm a senior biomedical engineering student. And I worked with three other classmates to design a portable, uh, manually powered ultraviolet purification system to treat water. Um, it's used being primarily the target market right now is for wilderness enthusiasts, people who are traveling, um, taking water out of a lake or a stream and are not sure whether the um, purification level is trustworthy or not. So they can use our product to treat the water and make it safe for them to drink in any location under any circumstance without an external power supply or fuel or anything like that because it's actually powered by a crank system. So it's very convenient, easy to use for everyone, accessible in any location. So. Uh, yes, we do. Um, if you come over here. <laughs> we have a video ready. This is our, um, our prototype working. So as I actually am cranking it in the video, um, you can turn the switches to light up the bulbs. And um, each fluorescent light bulb, there are three, lights up within the bottle. And when all three bulbs are lit, it takes about 90 seconds to disinfect any, um, any water sample of any uh, contamination level. So. Okay, now in the second semester, a bulk of our work was dedicated to designing a grading and drainage plan. Right now, for the existing facility, this drainage system it is, is at its maximum capacity, so we can't add any additional water flowing into the system. 
So what we had to do was to develop a grading. We had to first grade the, the area, which is uh, determine elevation changes uh, and things like that, so that we know which way the water is flowing. Once we were able to determine the direction of water flow, we were able to strategically place inlets along the site so that we can accurately uh, catch the water. In addition to the grading and drainage plan, we also had to develop an erosion and sediment control plan, which is uh, seen here. Here are existing, these are some of the inlets that are existing in the facility already, and during construction, you wanna preserve them. You don't want any additional sediment to flow in and clog the system. So we use silt fences and uh, sandbags and to control any extra runoff, any extra uh, sediments and runoff that might flow into the inlets. Well, uh, patients with diabetes uh, suffers from a condition known as peripheral neuropathy in addition to poor circulation. Uh, so we design an insole that detects the onset of ulcer wound formation in the feet using pressure and temperature sensors to detect these before they occur and uh, hopefully stop it from happening before it becomes an issue and to knock down on the uh, amount of amputations that occur every year because of diabetic peripheral neuropathy. And uh, what we did was we have pressure and temperature sensors embedded in an insole. And uh, for temperature monitoring, what we did was we're comparing the same section of different feet. So yeah, that's maybe for, we should walk over here. For one foot, well, we'll use this one. This section here would be compared against this section here of the same section of different feet. And uh, that comparison, if we find a difference of above four degrees, which is what we found in our uh, research. And why four degrees? Four degrees is what we found in our research to be uh, indicative of inflammation and uh, potential ulcer formation. In addition to the pressure changes, six kilograms per square centimeter on any one of these spots of the foot is uh, a potential ulcer issue. So what we've done is we've utilized utilize pressure and temperature sensors to uh, detect these signs before they become a problem and alert the patient, alert the doctor, and uh, eliminate, hopefully, the need for most of these amputations that occur every year that are extremely expensive and uh, very uh, uh, detrimental to quality of life. So we built a system that decontaminates um, medical waste fluid accumulated from medical disaster relief vehicles that go out in the field. So what happens is that when there's a disaster like 9-11 or Hurricane Katrina, there are these medical um, vehicles that go out and they perform treatments like surgeries. And what happens is that these surgeries are going to they're going to accumulate blood, um, urine, tissue, a lot of waste matter that they can't just throw away. So what happens, that's how we come in. We, our system decontaminates all of the waste fluid so that it could be discarded in the natural environment without um, contaminating anyone else um, under EPA standards. And um, so that the vehicle can stay longer at the disaster relief site so they can treat more patients. Hi, uh, I'm Chad Ingrick. Uh, my project was the ASME Design Competition Robot. Uh, basically what we had to do was design a robot to go within the parameters of the ASME competition. Uh, we had size constraints, we had weight constraints, uh, we had constraints on the batteries we could use, everything had to be over the counter. Uh, so basically what we did was we made a chassis out of plexiglass, uh, we used servo motors, uh, hooked up to a remote control for essentially a remote controlled airplane and we used a servo to uh, basically change the angle of attack on the obstacles here so we can flatten it out or we can put it all the way up. We also did, uh, we modified servo motor circuitry to drive our, our actual drive motors instead of the servos only turning 180 degrees we got free spinning servos so we could control it with this uh, remote control right here. Um, this is actually very different from our original design. We started with a static design and uh, decided that that wasn't going to surmount obstacles quite as well as we had hoped. So we went with this modular design so we could change it so it would fit within the parameters but also let it push itself over obstacles once it got to it and so we'd be able to do everything we wanted to and fit within the parameters of the competition. 
So uh, this is a, uh, a test page showing off uh, the abilities of Cron Tablet. Cron Tablet is a uh, device, it's a pillbox that actually sends you an SMS or a simple text message whenever you forget to take your medication. Um, so as you can see here, uh, we've taken our medication on Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday, but Wednesday has not yet been taken. So if we were to open up the pill box on Wednesday and remove the pill, uh, you can actually see that Wednesday will update dynamically and uh, show that the pill has actually been taken. And uh, so now you can see that the pill has been taken on Wednesday. And if we were to place the pill back, it would uh, show that the pill has not been taken. So that's, that's a demonstration of our sensor network and the ability of it to determine whether or not pills are located inside. How you doing? I'm Chris Greenfield, and I'm part of the uh, civil engineering team designing a new LEED certified green dormitory for the campus here at Stevens. Uh, as you can see, our dormitory is right here. We designed a seven-story dorm housing over 600 students and we designed it to be energy efficient and LEED certified gold. Uh, LEED certification is basically the benchmark rating system for uh, how sustainable a building is. Uh, and uh, yeah, this is our building right here. Um, structurally, we designed it uh, so that we would have maximum uh, river views. I know a lot of students here at Stevens like their river views. Um, we had to do a site survey. Here's a, a cross section of our cut and fill calculations cutting into the site. We're proposing to knock down Jacobus and uh, put our building on that site. Um, we did a brief cost estimation looking at about $50 million. We of course have to look at the, uh, the plumbing costs and things like that. The, uh, the campus is, or the, the school itself is actually looking to build a dorm on our site. So we're going to meet with the administration and uh, try and give them some of our ideas. Um, the uh, mechanical engineering students here um, in our group designed a very unique heating and cooling system. A typical building has an, uh, an air conditioning system and a heating system and what we have is a radiant heating and cooling system through capillary tubes. Uh, basically what that system does is it pumps hot and cold water through slabs in the floor and ceiling to uh, regulate the temperature of the building. It's a very unique way. Uh, a lot of people use radiant heating for their house but radiant cooling is relatively new technology. Um, we received 40 points uh, an overview of all of our points right here, I'm not going to go through all of them, but we have points ranging from uh, not having new parking to a reduction in, in uh, water usage to uh, reduction in energy usage based on a baseline. Um, and uh, indoor environmental quality is a, is a, big, a big thing there. And uh, a green roof is going to be added as well to uh, insulate the building and uh, add some more sustainability, reduce runoff and things like that. Uh, we hope the school comes to us for some ideas when designing the site. Uh, they want to break ground on it sometime in 2010, so hopefully they'll come talk to us. But uh, this, is our, this is our thing, we're, we're proud of it, and uh, we like our design. I'm Dr. Robin Stepman, and I was an advisor to a few of the senior biomedical engineering groups this year. And I just came from the Senior Design Expo and was very impressed with the results of what the students have designed and finished this year. Um, all of actually the specialties, biomedical engineering, the mechanical engineers, as well as the EEs, and um, interested to see what they come up with next year.